Children of Morta may still have a few more months before it's officially released, but we all had a chance to take a look at a free demo that was put out near the end of June, and from what I've played, I am really excited about this one. So the concept is that we are playing an action roguelike, where it's up to us to save the land from a corruption that's taking over. And while we've all heard that story many times over, what the game does differently is that it presents itself as a family affair. You play the family that guards the mountain that supposedly holds kind of like the life force of the land, and it's up to the entire family to use their own skills and utility to save the world. And this comes through in both general gameplay as well as the persistence. But before we get to that, the general core gameplay of Children of Morta is an action pseudo roguelike kind of experience. Each biome is procedurally generated. It looks like it's kind of like a mixture of randomly generated corridors with preset or hard coded room events. You can play the game either single player or with a friend. It looks like it is local co op. I don't know if the final version of the game will have online play. And please keep in mind, with the fact that this is a pre-release beta demo, what you see may not represent the current version of the game. But each character that you play as has their own unique abilities, a special summons or a special power, and a unique skill. The father, for instance, is our close range warrior slash tank. His shield can block all damage while allowing him to attack while blocking, and he can be upgraded to get kind of a reflect damage. His daughter is an archer who may not be good at attacking multiple targets like her dad, but is free to snipe with impunity from range, as well as call down devastating arrow shots. As a very great twist on the game, that every character or every family member that you control in combat has a skill tree. And the more you play with them, the more that person levels up, unlocking more skills. And the reason why you want to play with everybody in the game is that at certain level thresholds, they will unlock a quote unquote kind of family skill or family passive that provides bonuses to the remain to everybody else who goes out. I think the father gives everybody additional armor, I think the daughter gives increased movement speed and things like that. And it's a great way of rewarding the player for diversifying their play. But as you go through each level, you're going to collect keystones or kind of like key elements that are used to unlock chests and you're looking for relics, which provide passive benefits for the remainder of that run. The run ends when you've either beaten the boss of the area, or your character dies. And death in Children of Morta is just basically sent back to the start. There doesn't seem to be any permadeath or Iron Man modes in the game. But what the game does really well, besides looking very gorgeous in terms of its graphics, is providing that one more turn itch that we see from some of the best, or one more playthrough itch from the very best roguelikes. And similar to games like Rogue Legacy and others that are saving my mind right now, the game is built on persistence. And we're going to do a quick shout out to our Patreon supporters and sponsors, and when we come back, we'll, we'll talk about the persistent element of Children of Morta, and kind of like the few little nitpicks I have of the game right now. And now for a quick thank you to our Patreon supporters and current Game Wisdom sponsors. If you would like to continue the discussion on game design, be sure to check out our Discord channel, link down below. As with any roguelike style game, you are going to die in Children of Morta. And when that happens, you are taken back to the family's home for the game's persistent element. All the relics or passive bonuses you get during the playthrough are of course wiped, but the currency that you pick up is stored here and used for upgrades by our friend here who is like walking off screen. But this is kind of the way of Children of Morta setting up similar to Rogue Legacy and other kind of longer form roguelike style games that 
you are meant to eventually win, whether it is by skill or by just long-term abstracted progression. And this can be very polarizing for these kinds of roguelike designs because you're not really able, I feel, to beat Children of Morta without getting these upgrades going. This is not like the Binding of Isaac or Enter the Gungeon where the persistent elements simply unlock more things and challenges to do. Here, you are literally going to get upgrades based on the currency that you spend. And this is very important as the enemies are going to become more varied and you're going to need these just to be able to stand up to them. And this is on top of having the skill progression or the character leveling as well. And like I said, for some people this can be annoying to be told that you can play the game but you're still going to be losing no matter what you do. But I found Children of Mortar not to be so bad in this regard, like something along the lines of Rogue Legacy, at least from what we played in this demo, which was only the first three levels, including a boss fight. And the reason is that it still felt like skill was going to be the predominant factor. And once I got a few upgrades, I was able to make a lot of progress. And I don't know how many people who play the demo managed to get through all three levels and still remains to be seen just how the difficulty curve goes up and if there are any other examples of persistence that the game will throw at you. But with that said, to begin to wrap things up here, I am really impressed with Children of Morta. I love the aesthetics of this game and the roguelike design just works for me. And when it is released, I think by I think it's coming out in September maybe. I'm definitely all for giving this a full run on the channel, and ideally we'll be able to get the developers on to talk more about the game closer or after the release. But with that said, if you are interested in Children of Morta, you'll find the Steam link in the description down below. I don't think the demo is still available at this point, I don't know 100%, but be sure to check the game out if you're interested when it's released. And if you'd like me to take a look at your game in the future, please don't hesitate to get in touch. But otherwise, this has once again been a first look at Children of Morta, and come back for daily discussions on game design here, and on game wisdom, where we some of the art and science of games. Till next time, take care. If you're looking for a book on design, my first title, 20 Essential Games to Study, is out now. It is available where most books are sold, and it comes in paper, hardcover, or digital copies. This is the perfect book for anyone interested in learning about game design, whether you are a student, enthusiast, or just a fan. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoy things, be sure to do all the liking and subscribing that the kids are doing these days. Check out our Discord channel link down below where we hang out and chat game design, and come back later tonight for our regular streamings. But that's it. And tune in for more great content here and on Game Wisdom, where we examine the art and science of games.